This is Fred Beck from Fred Talks Fighting. Today, I'm very lucky we're joined by Chris Finner-Smith. So thank you very much for coming on, Chris. Thanks for having me, mate. So what's been going with you, Chris? How are you? Yeah, all good, mate. Um, just, you know, chilling after the, the weekend and uh, trying to trying to get rid of this shiner that I've got. But um, it's turning yellow now, so it's looking even worse. Um, but yeah, no, all, all is good. And so after a fight, how many days do you have off until you start training again or just start training again on Monday? Uh, I've done two runs already this week. Uh, so I ran Monday morning and jumped in the sea after. Luckily, uh, uh, obviously living down in Bournemouth, we've got the sea there, uh, which is nice. Nice and cold, good for recovery. So I did that Monday morning and then I just did a nice light run yesterday as well. And I'll probably train again today, to be honest. I haven't got much to do. Everyone else is working. Uh, and so I get bored and I just end up training. <laughs> yeah, swimming in the sea in March is quite is quite cold. So so last time you fought, not this time, the last before you fought Duke, you were in fight camp and you fought 14 0 challenger. You knocked down the second round. But this time it was a lot different because you're staying in the Hilton Hotel instead of Eddie's back garden. How was that staying in Hilton? Yeah, yeah, it was uh we we stayed in uh in the Holiday Inn for the fight camp in the summer, uh, but the, this this fight this fight camp and this bubble was was a lot better. The the food was slightly better, and uh, and obviously there was a lot more to do. We had a dartboard, ping pong table. Uh, we had the football on, which was good for for the the league game that Bournemouth had, but not so good for the FA Cup game we had on Saturday. Um, but yeah, it was very enjoyable. Everyone and mingled really well, uh, and there was plenty of space. But uh, yeah, I'd say this this as a week, uh, it was a lot better. And I remember seeing on one of the one of the fights are playing out on the TV. I saw all the McGuigan team. They were playing chess. Were you playing? Do you play good chess? Yeah, yeah. I played. Uh, I think I played Shane a couple of times, and uh, played uh, somebody else who, who was working on the show. Um, yeah, I got, got a couple of wins, but um, I think Shane beat me beat me a couple of times. Well, we're pretty even when it comes to chess. Um, but yeah, I, I like I like a little bit of chess, but I'm not very good. Who's the best out of all the McGuigan team? Uh, I think I'd probably just edge it, if not at Shane. Um, me and Luke Campbell have had a few games, but he's gone off the boil a bit. He hasn't been playing as, as, uh, as often. Um, but yeah, I'd say pr probably me or Shane. That sounds all right then. So, in this preparation for this fight against Ducar, you had two of your teammates, Lawrence and Andy Fowler, fighting on the same card. Was this camp any different because of that? No, uh, I'm used to that. I box on from early on in my career. I was boxing on the same show. Uh, obviously, we had Josh Taylor in the gym, and we had like four of us on a show. Um, so the training was very much the same. It was. Uh, you know, we always, Shane's all, always in the gym anyway. Um, and he's very good at uh, giving his time and, and um, the right amount of time to each fighter, regardless of what stage their camp, uh, of camp they're at. So, yeah, it's, uh, it was it was just no normal, really. It's actually good because we all peak at the same time. So when it comes down to doing the circuits and the strength sessions, we're doing similar stuff anyway. Um, so yeah, it was it was uh, it was a good good camp, and obviously we're all buzzing at the same time. We were all going through exactly the same emotions at the same time of making weight and having your last twelve round spar and all those sort of things. Um, so yeah, so it probably makes it a little bit easier. And so I remember for the Olympic Training Centre. I knew you didn't go to the Olympics. You were an ABA finalist, but when the, in the Olympic Training Centre. When one of the teammates loses, if they don't go back to the same place where all the other teammates who won are staying, what would happen if one of you guys did lose? Would you still go out to the changing rooms or would you go out to a separate changing rooms because maybe the morale might be lowered a bit? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, it, I wouldn't know. Uh, we've never been in that situation, touch wood. Um, but I, obviously our staff's in the changing room. We'd have to go back there um, at some point. But... I had a similar thing the other night. Um, I had my friend Lee Cutler was on the card uh, and unfortunately obviously got stopped in, in the first round. Um, just got caught early on and, and never really recovered. But um, I was watching that in the change room and uh, they obviously, after he got knocked down the first time, he uh, they the lads in the change room turned the, 
TV off because they didn't want me to see that. But I think as a fighter, I think in this sport, you've got to be very mentally strong anyway. Um, and I'd never let something, someone else's, you know, defeat, whether it's a really bad knockout or someone I'm really close to, uh, you can't let that affect you. You're very headstrong in, in that sense. So I think that's how, how you've got to be as a fighter. And you'll say fighting is a very, very mental game. And then, so this time, your opponent was Dukar. He's a very tough opponent. He's been in there the best before. He's never been stopped. Now you've had time to reflect on the fight. How would you rate your performance? Mm, on the night, I think I said a six and a half or, or a seven. Um, there was a lot of things that most people would, wouldn't would see, which I did really well. Certain things we've been working on in camp, which you, you don't realise as just a casual fan watching it, but uh, and even from fight to fight as a avid boxing fan there's things you wouldn't notice but we've worked on that we've worked on in camp but um yeah I'd, I'd probably give myself about six and a half um out of ten to be honest because there's plenty to work on but I was comfortable the whole time throughout the fight and I've been very guilty in the past of trying too hard and trying to do too much and uh so that's a positive just being in control and boxing well within myself I thought you had a very good performance, but you knocked him down twice. Did you ever feel like you might want to press the stoppage at all? Or is yeah, I mean, in the sixth round, I did. In the fourth round, I asked the corner how, when I dropped him, I said, how long's left? They said 10 seconds. So I thought uh, it's going to be hard to get him out there now because he'd just tuck up. And I think I got one shot in before the bell. Um, but then the sixth round, I was, uh, it was in the first minute. Um, but he's just very good at surviving. He's hard to hit clean. Um, he's got real long arms, so he can, you know, uh, really protect his head and his body at the same time. And it was hard to get that, um, get the get the shots in to to open up his guard. And you know, but that's something I can learn. And and if I box him again, I you know, if I box him next week, then I could probably and be in the same situation. I might be able to get him out of there. But that's part of the learning process. Um, but yeah, in that that sixth round, I, I really thought this this could be it and I could have been the first man to stop him and really make a statement but um, it wasn't it wasn't to be uh, he was a tough bloke and he survived really well and he's uh, all credit to him and now you've got another good win on your resume what do you what would you like to do next because I know I know you meant to fight for the British title I think it's last November the opponent got injured what would you like to do next um, I'd like to fight Tommy McCarthy next for the European um, it just makes sense I think both of us are very, uh, very much at similar stages of our career, boxing, similar level of opponents. Um, obviously, both had losses to Richard Riappel, and it, it makes sense. I think uh, we're, we're sort of the number three and four in Britain right now um, because we've come back off our losses and put in some good performances. Um, so from the ranking side, I'd say we're three and four. Um, and... Yeah, um, we. Uh, I think that, that that makes sense. I have no idea what's going on with Dion Juma with his eye injury and stuff as well. Um, so I don't. Obviously, I've sort of been trying to get that fight for the last six months, and it, it it's been cancelled twice. So uh, I don't want to waste any more time because it, it could happen again. Um, so I'd, I'd like to move forward and box Tommy McCarthy. And that European title that'd be very nice to have on your shelf. And but before I let you go, I want to give you a prediction: the big fight this Saturday. In Gibraltar, Alexander Vetkin and Dillian White. How do you think that fight goes down? Yes, yeah, an interesting one. Um, I think, I think obviously last time Dillian was very much in control, um, and it's the typical, you know, cliche of that's heavyweight boxing because um, it's one punch can can change a fight, and it really did. And I, but I think this time, I think Dillian will will just be a little bit more switched on, learn from his mistakes, and and. I think he'll get rid of him in the first half of the fight and, and definitely apply apply the pressure when he's we've got him hurt and just add that little ten percent, which is probably all he needed in the last fight. So you be real careful this time for the uppercut. All right, Chris, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. And where can people find you on social media? Uh, so I'm just at Chris Billum on Instagram and and Twitter. Uh, so yeah, feel free to to follow and and watch the journey. All right, Chris, thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Cheers, Fred. Take care.